वेलकम प्रभु एंड परम रूप प्रभु स्पिरिचुअल ट्रेनर हैं काफी सालों से और जब वो दस साल से थे तभी उनको भक्ति में इंटरेस्ट था और स्पेशली उनको शास्त्र पढ़ने में और मेडिटेशन में इंटरेस्ट था और फिर उन्होंने काफी लोगों से डायरेक्शंस लिया अपने भौतिक जीवन में उन्होंने बहुत ही बड़े बड़े यूनिवर्सिटी से पढ़ाई की है तो उनका जो अगर हम थोड़ा सा बैकग्राउंड देखें एजुकेशनल और प्रोफेशनल बैकग्राउंड तो आ, 2003 में वो यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलिफोर्निया अरवाइन में और टफ्ट में नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न में यहाँ पे भी बाद में बहुत सारे लोगों को ट्रेनिंग देना चैंटिंग मेडिटेशन के बारे में वो करते आ रहे हैं आ, अभी प्रभु जी डायरेक्टर हैं इंजीनियरिंग के मैथ वर्क्स जो मैट लैब अगर आप लोग बहुत सारे लोग जो काम करते हैं मैट लैब जो कंपनी है जो आप टूल यूज करते हैं मैथ वर्क उसका बनाती है उसमें डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग है प्रभु जी प्रभु जी का बैचलर आईआईटी खरगपुर से हुआ राइट प्रभु आईआईटी खरगपुर से उन्होंने बीटेक किया था और पीएचडी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलिफोर्निया अरवाइन जो अमेरिका में है सैन कैलिफोर्निया में और प्रभु जी बहुत हम्बल हैं बहुत बहुत इंथुजियास्टिक भी हैं और प्रभु जी हिज होलीनस रोमापाद स्वामी महाराज के डिसाइपल हैं शिष्य हैं रोमापाद स्वामी महाराज के बारे में आप लोग सही शायद नहीं जानते होंगे रोमापाद स्वामी महाराज शिला प्रभुपाद के बहुत ही क्वालिफाइड बहुत ही रिनाउंड डिसाइपल हैं और महाराज बहुत ही नाइस हैं मैं उनसे कई बार मिला हूँ एक दो बार सेवा भी किया उनकी तो आ, और महाराज के अगर आप लेक्चर सुनोगे तो एक गोलोक जैसा लेक्चर है उनका बहुत अच्छे लेक्चर्स हैं बहुत अच्छा से बताते हैं तो प्रभु जी डायरेक्टली महाराज से रोमापाद स्वामी महाराज से सीखे और अभी करते आ रहे हैं महाराज की इच्छा से सेवा करते आ रहे हैं तो प्रभु जी अभी यहाँ पे बॉस्टन में हैं अपने परिवार के साथ माता जी भी भक्त हैं और बच्चे भी हैं उनके और प्रभु जी यहाँ पे बहुत सारी यूनिवर्सिटीज में जो बॉस्टन में बड़ी बड़ी यूनिवर्सिटीज हैं वहाँ पे स्पिरिचुअल एडवाइजर हैं और सर्टिफाइड योगा टीचर भी हैं तो बहुत कुछ करते हैं आज प्रभु जी से हम चैंटिंग के बारे में सीखेंगे प्रभु जी से मैं चैंटिंग वर्कशॉप में मिला बॉस्टन में उन्होंने वर्कशॉप किया तो वहाँ से मुझे जानने को मिला इसके बारे में और फिर मैंने रिक्वेस्ट किया कि आप आइए हमारे साथ भी शेयर करिए इसको क्योंकि हम सबको हेल्प की जरूरत है तो प्रभु जी काइंडली एग्री हुए अपना समय फ्राइडे नाइट है पूरे हफ्ते काम करने के बाद फ्राइडे की रात को इतनी देर तक जगना करना और फिर कल सैटरडे संडे भक्तों का जीवन सेवा में ही चला जाता है तो हम सब उनके बहुत आभारी हैं और प्रभु जी हम आप सब आपका वेलकम करेंगे और आप का जो जो शेड्यूल है मैं थोड़ा सा जस्ट लोगों को रिकैप दे दूंगा कि प्रभु जी तीन मॉड्यूल में प्रेजेंटेशन देंगे जो प्रभु जी अभी आपको बताएंगे भी आई एम श्योर उनके पास होगा स्लाइड और उसमें पहले मॉड्यूल एक घंटे मतलब 40 45 50 मिनट का है फिर 5 10 मिनट ब्रेक मिलेंगे फिर ऐसे ही दूसरा मॉड्यूल है तीसरा मॉड्यूल और आपको अगर पूरा बेनिफिट चाहिए तो तीनों मॉड्यूल आज कम से कम सुनिए ऐसा मत सोचिए रिकॉर्डिंग मिल जाएगा ये हो जाएगा हो जाएगा जिंदगी में ऐसा अपॉर्चुनिटी कभी नहीं आता मैंने किया है बहुत ही इफेक्टिव है बहुत फायदा होगा और हमारा प्लान है कि एक बार हम ये वर्कशॉप खत्म होगी तो हम जो प्रभु जी का टेक्निक है हम अपने चैंटिंग जो डेली सेशन है इसमें हम यूज करेंगे उसको जिससे आप लोग प्रैक्टिस भी करते रहो जो आप सीखोगे आज आप हम उसको प्रैक्टिस करेंगे और देखेंगे कि हमारा फोकस अटेंशन हरे हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र में कैसे आता है तो ये प्लान है आ, ओके प्रभु पवन परम रूपा प्रभु ओवर टू यू हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच पुरुषोत्तम प्रभु फॉर योर वेरी वेरी kind and generous introduction i'm really grateful to you for your association and um uh if you have any sort of advice for me going forward as well feel free to interrupt me at any time and and kindly um let me know if i need to adjust anything to um main koshish karunga ki thoda hindi thoda english me Uh, ये पूरा प्रेजेंटेशन देने की like, अगर कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा है तो uh, आप uh, अपना हाथ खड़ा कर लीजिए आइदर जूम के मीडियम से या वीडियो ऑन करके जैसा भी आपको ठीक लगता है और uh, 
और मैं फिर मैं क्लैरिफाई करूँगा अगर कोई चीज़ अगर ठीक से मैं एक्सप्रेस नहीं कर पाया तो um, आप लोग मोर और लेस कम्फर्टेबल है राइट right? इंग्लिश में अगर मैं सेवेंटी एटी परसेंट अगर इंग्लिश में चलता रहा तो चलेगा ना हिंदी में रखे प्रभु जी नहीं ऐसा करते हैं प्रभु जी ऐसा करते हैं कि आप जैसे आप कंफर्टेबल हैं वैसा करिए क्योंकि हम चाहते हैं आप फ्लो में करिए नहीं तो फिर आप सोचते रहेंगे कि यार फिर वो फ्लो नहीं आता है बोलने में राइट तो तो मैं क्या करूंगा जब सेशन एंड जैसे एक सेशन मॉड्यूल एंड होगा तो पांच मिनट लेके मैं थोड़ा सा समराइज देख दे दूंगा कि प्रभु जी ने क्या हिंदी में बताया जैसे एग्जैक्टली क्या क्या डिस्कस तो उससे क्या होगा और किसी का कुछ प्रश्न है तो आप चैट में लिख दीजिए नहीं तो कहीं एक कापी पेन ले लीजिए नोट करके रखिए हाँ कि अगर क्वेश्चन अभी नहीं सॉल्व हो पाया या नहीं हमें समय मिला आज के प्रोग्राम में तो हम प्रभु जी को बाद में भी अगले हफ्ते का भी एक घंटे का टाइम लेके क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन अलग से भी कर लेंगे क्योंकि क्योंकि हम चाहते हैं कि जो प्रभु जी बताना चाहते हैं पहले सुने सब चीजें जान ले और प्रश्न होगा आराम से राइट तो क्वेश्चन नोट करिए कॉपी पेन रखिए और फिर वहां से हम आ, या चैट में आप लिख दीजिए क्वेश्चन आंसर के लिए हर सेशन के मॉड्यूल के अंत में पांच मिनट मिलेगा पांच दस मिनट ओके प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण Yes, that's a very good idea. Okay. So, um, are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Prabhu, one of them clear. Hai. Hmm. Okay, fantastic. So, the title for this overall seminar, as you can see, is "Chant for Matt." And, uh, you have to understand why I chose this title. Chose kiya. So, the goal for the overall three modules as prushtam prabhu was describing is to uh, learn the art of attentive mantra meditation and i have called out um called it out as a proven method for a reason that you will find out towards the end of this presentation you know um confucius he made a very interesting remark that i uh here and i forget but then when i see i can remember and then when i get an opportunity to to do it then i can understand so here my goal is that through this workshop we will get to not only hear but we will also get to uh see something in front of you the slides are going to enter your mind and consciousness and we will also get multiple opportunities to to do something just so that whatever i'm presenting is going um internal all right so before i go anywhere let's just very very uh, nicely take darshan of radha sham sundar from shri vrindavan dham so these beautiful deities are going to act as our reference point for pretty much the rest of the presentation so just take a moment to to nicely take darshan of these beautiful deities okay so with that let's start with the first module where i would like to talk about some of the the common principles and tips that are offered for for high quality chanting or for bringing attention into our daily meditation the first step um, now just to give you a little bit of background of how ended i ended up creating this whole presentation um just 2 years ago i got an opportunity to go on yatra with my spiritual master to vrindavan dham and then when i came back um in the month of november i was um feeling very um dejected you can say while i was chanting sitting in my temple room and i was feeling dejected because i had been introduced to the hari krishna maha mantra for um more than 35 years by that time 
and I had attended more than 10 Japa retreats um, within ISKCON. And also, I have been chanting 16 rounds for close to 20 years. And yet I cannot say that when I am doing one full round of Maha, Maha Mantra chanting, um, I was able to concentrate fully. I cannot say that at the end of that one round, I have paid attention to every single mantra. That was quite actually um, dejecting experience for me. Um, Usha Mataji raised hand. Would you like to say something? Sir, Galti Sivu, I approach the lower down there. Okay, we can. So, um, so I actually that particular day started praying fervently uh, while I was chanting my round. And uh, what happened was really miraculous for me. Something from within actually was revealed by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, which I felt was um, was a very, very important aspect of the, the Japa meditation that I was missing, because of which I was not able to, to chant attentively. So after I got that insight, I felt that I got a revolutionary um, benefit in my own chanting. And then later on, when I shared with various students and uh, different devotee communities, I found that they are also able to apply the same technique. So that became the basis for my creating this presentation and then sharing in such a way that, that um, you all can try to apply the same um, technique that I had benefited from. So let's first go through the common tips that are very com common in Japa read circles. So first thing that we learn is that, that when we are chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the process is to hear every mantra. And therefore we have to take ourselves seriously. In other words, we have to catch ourselves, sincerely hear every mantra that we are chanting. Now, of course, that is easier said than done. And therefore, there are some, some important tips that are provided. Like one common tip that is um, very effective is to somehow try to hear the first Hare. So when we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we try to hear the first Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So with that, what happens is that, that if you are able to hear the first Hare, then there is a higher likelihood that you would be able to hear the rest of the mantra. So therefore, as we are chanting, we try to hear the first Hare um, as much as possible. Then the next step uh, that is also very common is to train our mind to chant one mantra. Because what happens is that mind is very complex. And we all know that. It has a tendency to, to just drift away into anything but the subject matter that we want to focus on. And therefore, we have to simplify the task for the mind. Now, this tip is directly coming from a beautiful book by His Grace Bhurijan Prabhu. He has written a book called Japa. If you have not read that book, I would highly recommend uh, you reading that book. So this is this this tip is directly taken from that book, and also very popular in Jabba read circles, uh, retreat circles. Um, so the idea is that we have to tell the mind that you are chanting only one mantra. Which mantra? The mantra that I am chanting right now. So all I have to do is that again and again I am training my mind to just hear one mantra and that's all so by simplifying that uh, it makes it easier for the mind to then lock in overall there are four p's that are um, talked about in the co context of chanting like if you um, have heard Srila Prabhupada 
Prince Shila Prabhupada is chanting. In the middle of the chanting, Prabhupada says, sit properly. I'm sure you all have heard that. So the idea is that uh, the four P's, posture, pace, pronunciation, and prayerfulness. So posture is very important. Like if you are kind of bent down or just, uh, you know, sitting on a sofa, almost on a lying posture, um, we would most likely fall asleep. And therefore, um, it's important to keep the, the body in a straight line, just like a yogi, you know, so that's the posture. So this is called bodily alignment. And when we are chanting, we are supposed to chant at a regular pace, you know, it should not be Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare, and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. There has to be a, a rhythmic pace that, that has to be maintained that we are comfortable with uh, so that the mind remains locked in to the mantra. And then while we are chanting, sometimes when we are chanting, we may be trying to get our round very quickly done. So you might not even pronounce the mantra properly. So that's not right. Like we may say, Hare no, 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 no. like something like that, you know. So, so we may think that we are chanting, but actually we have hardly pronounced the names of Hare, Krishna, Rama clearly. So pronunciation is very important. And then apart from this bodily alignment and this mental alignment, we also need the mood to be right. So there has to be a calling out to Krishna in a pure, prayerful mood. After all, chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra is taking shelter of Krishna. It is to acknowledge that I need help. When we are very proud, it is very difficult for us to call out to anybody. And therefore, the chanting process is supposed to also help us develop the quality of humility where we recognize that we are very, very insignificant and tiny compared to the source of our existence, Lord Sri Krishna. And therefore, we need to um, be ready to position ourselves in that dependent um, mood of prayer. And therefore, um, the best way to cry out for Krishna is to consider ourselves to be a small child helplessly calling out for its mother. This is the common analogy that Srila Prabhupada gives. So if there is a six month old baby, the baby does not know how to fulfill its basic um, bodily demands. And therefore it becomes totally dependent on the mother. So likewise, we also need to feel that dependency on the Supreme Lord. Chanting is never like, okay, I know how to figure out things, you know, and still, okay, just for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, the process of chanting, we may chant the mantras. It's almost like, Tu bhi kya dekh lega? like Krishna, we can, we can come and <laughs> uh, come before Krishna with that kind of attitude. So it's much better to actually understand that, uh, that we are very, very tiny and insignificant and dependent no matter what the uh, position might be. Then um, we have to understand that there are every aspect of our being that is provided to us as a resource for improving the quality of our meditation. Like for example, the simplest thing possible that we do regularly is breathing, right? It's just that we may not always be conscious of our breathing but the point is that if just before the chanting, if we do a little bit of pranayam, like simple pranayam, like um, brahmari pranayam and anulom vilom pranayam, these are considered to be very efficacious for um, bringing the mind in control or calming the mind. And therefore, before chanting, if you just do two minutes of breathing exercise that can actually uh, help us draw the consciousness inward. So usually our consciousness is always projecting outward and trying to see, we are always scanning the sense objects around us and trying to see how I can enjoy, you know. 
So because our consciousness is always directed outward, we need to have a strategy to, to somehow pull the consciousness inward. And the strategy for doing that is breathing exercise because breath is internal to our existence. So it's very effective. Another way that Krishna recommends in the Bhagavad Gita, this is coming from the Bhagavad Gita 6th chapter 26th verse. That yato yato nishchalati manas chanchalam astiram tadastato niyamya etad atmini eva vasham nayat. That wherever and whenever the mind wanders, first thing is that we, we detect that mind wandered away. And then we pull the mind back. Pull the mind back to, to again focus on hearing the sound vibration of the chanting. So, in other words, we are always sort of vigilant while chanting. Another very, very important aspect of our existence is the element of touch. This power of touch is, um, is something that, that you cannot fathom how effective it is. And that is why we chant on beads. When we are chanting on the beads, on every bead, we are trying to rotate, you know, and feel and rotate. So through that, that tactile contact, we can actually pull the mind back into the present. And in this way, we can be present with the mantra. So, so every beat is giving us an opportunity to pull the mind back by, by feeling the beat with our finger. And this way we are um, grabbing hold of the, of the mind while we are grabbing hold of the bead while we are moving forward uh, during chanting. Another important principle that is also stated in the, the Japa book by uh, His Grace Burijan Prabhu is to carry a spirit of detachment. So oftentimes what happens is that when we have chanted certain number of mantras uh, in a particular round, uh, sometimes we may start feeling bad about the quality so far that we were able to give in the chanting and we may say okay so far the chanting has not been going so well i don't know what's going to happen so we start actually worrying about the the mantras that we have chanted so far and that also creates a new kind of distraction or we may start thinking that okay maybe in the next series of uh, beads i'm going to be chanting more effectively so that that idea of thinking about the past and the future takes our attention away from the present and therefore we have to carry a sense of detachment that okay whatever has happened has happened let's just focus on the present and use these other techniques to to pull the mind back now all of these things are something that we are doing um, as a part of our our own efforts just like mother yashoda so mother yashoda uh, throughout the day, she was trying to bind Krishna, right? She was tying up ropes one after another. And as she was, she would get the rope around Krishna's waist, she will find that it is falling short by two fingers. And then she will tie more ropes. And then again, it will be two fingers too short. And this was going on for the whole day. And, and it so happened that her whole body was covered with perspiration. So it is described in Srimad Bhagavatam at the point when Krishna allowed himself to be bound by Mother Yashoda. That, that point was described very beautifully by Srila Shukadeva Goswami. That Swa Matu Svinya Gatraya Vistrasta Kavarasraja Drishtuva Parishramam Krishna Swa Matu um, no, not Swamatu. Kripaya Asit Swabandhani. So, Krishna's own mother, Swamatu, Swinagatraya, the whole, whole body was covered with perspiration and the flowers on her hair were just, uh, were just uh, sprinkled all over the place because she was toiling hard to just bind Krishna. And the key point is that Shukadev Goswami is mentioning that Drishtva Parishramam Krishna. Krishna noticed the effort that was made by Mother Yashoda. 
Because sometimes when we are chanting, we may start thinking, is Krishna really noticing? I'm just going on and on and on. Is Krishna really noticing? So this verse, Shukadev Goswami is confirming that indeed Krishna sees our effort. Drishtva. Drishtva means literally to see. So after Krishna saw Mother Yashoda's efforts, that she was not ready to give up, then Kripaya Asit Sobandhane. Krishna released his Kripa Shakti and allowed Mother Yashoda to bind him. So the key point I'm trying to make here is that yes, we may try hard, you know, I mean, the whole presentation is all about improving the quality of our efforts. But Krishna always has the master key. And therefore, we have to understand that the chanting is all about developing the quality of humility, that we still are 100% dependent on the mercy of Krishna for uh, the quality of chanting. Another way I would like to say it is that the chanting is not something that we do. Chanting is a process to receive the mercy of Krishna. We are always on a receiving end when we are chanting. So in one sense, we are not chanting the Mahamantra. We are chanted by the Mahamantra because Mahamantra is not different from Krishna, the person. Now, the most important, why am I receiving this um, request to record on the cloud now? Okay, I hope everything is okay. Okay, yeah, now you, you're recording. Okay. So what yes. gets emphasized in the Japa circles is that the real chanting is heart deep. It is not lip deep. It's not just about producing some sound, but our heart needs to be involved. It's an opportunity to call out to the internal energy of Krishna and receive Krishna's grace. The internal energy of Krishna is Radharani. So, no, Prabhuji, that's why. Just, 